Greetings, welcome to the Power of Vintage. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at this Atari 800 XL, this very uh, grubby Atari 800 XL. I picked up uh, this as well as these other items here on an eBay auction the other day. It's, it's an interesting product. I love the 800 XL, I think it's great. Uh, these other items, not so much, but this thing's pretty grubby. We're gonna test it, make some mods to it, get it ready to go, and actually, the objective is, get this put together for a friend of mine so that he can have his own Atari 800 XL. All right, let's get to it. This here is an Atari 800 XL. Great computer. I actually really, really like this guy. Of the Atari 8-bits, while I don't think it's the most iconic or collectible, it is a great workhorse of, uh, of an Atari 8-bit. It's got the 64 megabyte, or megabytes, <laughs> 64 kilobytes of RAM. So it has not the maximum, but a, per a pretty good amount, right? So pretty much every bit of software will work on this. Most, bit, most software will work on this. There's a decent amount of room inside the case if you wanted to put uh, an ultimate one megabyte expansion in there or uh, ultimate uh, AV uh, video out uh, kind of upgrade. In most instances, from what I've seen, I've, I've worked on probably about a half dozen of these, uh, 800 XLs that is. The chips have been all socketed for me. Very easy to work with. <laughs> these are, they're built somewhat like tanks. I've had very few problems with these guys. This guy is pretty darn dirty, if you can take a look at it. It looks like it had a little damage to it in the front here. But you take a look at this guy, it's, it is a grubby computer, right? So I'm gonna take it apart and take a look on the inside. But, but that said, great computer. The story around this though is uh, last week, I had a, a retro computing friend reach out to me. Uh, a gentleman I had actually sold an Atari, a refurbished Atari ST on eBay to and you know, over the time he and I had chatted back and forth, I was helping him, helping him set up his GoTech, helping him set up his Ultra Satan hard drive emulator, get it all set up for him and whatnot. And said back and forth, so many emails. We eventually did a uh, some Zoom chats as well to kind of just do some real time help uh, and, and get him get him set up in that sense. So so we got a friendship there. He, he reached out to me last week and said, "Hey, do you have an extra Atari 800?" And I said, "You know what?" I don't have an Atari 800, an extra Atari 800. I have had one in the past, but I don't have one right now. What, what, why are you looking for an 800? He's like, well, I want the Atari 8-bits experience. I was like, well, have you th thought of the Atari 800 XL? And he's like, no, no, what's, what's up with that? And I said, well, they're easier to find. If you're just looking for the 8-bit the experience, they're easier to find. These are pretty darn robust. They, they have 64 kilobytes of RAM. All in all, they're probably the most compatible and, and relatively good to work with. If he's looking for, you know, as what I said back to him, say, hey, if you're looking for something to, to collect and, and be on the shelf, but also be able to use, an 800 is even awesomer than this. But 800 XL, if you just want to get the experience quickly and not emulation, this is a good way to go. So he doesn't know this. <laughs> I ordered this guy. My intent is to get send this over to him. He's He's been a good friend in, in many ways. And so want to just refurbish this guy, get this thing, see if I can't get this thing working. I'm not going to send it to him, not working, but get this all set up for him and then get it sent over so that he has the Atari 8-bit that he was looking for and, and enjoys that. So let's see if while I refurbish this and get something to my buddy, I can also create some cool content as well. So we'll go over this, clean it, get it set up, check it out. Do a couple, uh, one mod I think is what I'll end up doing, the the, the uh, S-Video mod where I take the chroma and attach it to the output cable so that it can get a, an S-Video signal out, a cleaner video signal. But uh, let's get to it, all right? All right, we got, we're gonna, we're not gonna do screen capture today because you know what, we're just gonna use the screen, uh, the TV screen over here quickly. 
Maybe if I ended up doing some games or whatnot and wanted to capture more detailed footage, we'll do it then, but this seems like the best approach here. All right, let's plug this guy in. We'll first just see how the boots. That is a good sign. Now, now that's not the best or cleanest signal. Let's see, let's grab a lovely computer game here. Power you off. We're gonna try a little bit of Pac-Man. Lovely, that looks good. All right, nice. This works decently well. And the video signal, while not the cleanest, is decent. We'll see what it looks like once I do the S-Video mod to this guy and see if that, if it needs a UAV upgrade, we'll see about maybe even putting that in place or at least offering that to my buddy. All right. Looking at this board, it looks like it's, it's actually really pretty clean. I don't think I need to clean anything this board at all. Maybe a little bit here where the opening for the cartridge port was, but in general, the RF shielding on these boards is actually really good at keeping junk off of them. So long as the RF shield is still intact, these are still pretty good. This looks good. All right, so what I will do now is I will take some time, clean up that lovely, lovely, lovely case. Let's take the look at the bottom. It's got some gunk on it. Lots of just dirt and dust and grime. Probably, like I said, probably sat in a garage for years or attic or something. We'll clean this guy up as well. Looks like a little repair work has been done down here or just some crack. I'll see if I can't try to close that up and make it a little better, a little more solid. Not the best, not perfect, but we'll get cleaning. All right. I'll come back with a clean uh, case in the next few minutes. All right. Looking at this 800XL backside of the board. In order to perform the S-Video mod, I need to connect this pin here. This is the video output to this pin here. All right, now that they're marked, I'll get stuff ready in order to perform the soldering. All right, got this nice piece of wire right here. Actually, you know what? I need to get my, my eyes on. Chris Edwards would call it his helmet of goober. It just helps to be able to see things just a little bit better. Just enough. So that we can make, make what needs to happen, happen. All right, let's start up by adding a little more fresh solder to each of the points. Good to go. There we go. There we go. Now for this guy down here. There we are, perfect. Good to go there. All right. in there. We'll get you all worked out. You know what? I need a little more light. Let's get this light on over here. Ah, that helps out. A little more light to see. All right, let's, let's try that again. There we go. All right, 
right, step number one, complete. Now I need to trim this to a good length. Let's route it nicely. There we go. Give it a little extra length. Let's get the wire exposed. Let's melt back that. Here we go. I'll eventually get to some good wire on the inside. As you can see, I am not the perfect best solder. But I get the job done. Well, hopefully I'll get the job done. There we go. Eventually we'll get this off. Good. Now we are exposed. And let's try a little something here. Here we go, the lovely tweezers. Nice to hold it in place. Let's make sure we have a nice little continuity check between the two pins. Let's hope we get a nice little beep. And then we will tape it down. All right, good to go. Once I got it started, let's see here. We're starting to get peeled back. There we go. Got a little bit of cold to hear me sniffling a little bit. All right, we got this guy and we can route this and hold this in place. Bingo. All right, let's get back to the bench and in front of the, the screen and see how this looks with this video. All right, here we go. Let's plug it in. Let's see if it works. Right now my little uh, HDMI converter is set to composite. So we'll take a look at that first. Let's get a joystick in. It'll be nice to test a game again. Let's see, all right. Perfect. All right, switch it to S-Video. Cross your fingers. Oh yeah, there we go. It is, you know, there's a little bit of jail barring, but it is showing a nice colorful S-Video signal. All right, Pac-Man, here we come. And we got color in S-Video. That is so much crisper. Let's see, okay, here is S-Video. And that is composite. I'm not sure if you're able to see it as much on the screen here, but for me, it is very clean, very different. Very good. All right, S-Video Mod is done. Perfect, let's button this guy back up.
I like to set the cases side by side like this. That way I can easily just align it in, fold it over, and then close it back up. There we go. All right, we are looking good here. There we are. I flip you over. There we go. Last bits, just closing it all up, button it up the last little bit. Working, tested working with S Video Mod to 800XL. go. We're in the auto test. Oh, that's not a row, so yeah, there we go. It's looking good. All voices sound good. All right, here we go. Keyboard's looking good. And let's go back up to memory. Let's do a quick ROM and RAM test, make sure all it's all working good. All right, back to this 800XL. Uh, as a part of this refurbishment, I want to make certain that I, as I give this to my friend, that he has a safe power supply with this. So this 800XL that I picked up did have an ingot power supply, this guy right here, big and beefy. Um, I did some testing on the voltages. They were waffling around a little bit. Now, it could be just my testing methodology, it could be that it's the, uh, the um, plug has a little bit of corrosion on it. It's a little dirty. You know what? I'm going to be safe, rather safe than sorry. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this guy up, clean up this head, this output, clean up really nicely, and then chop it off and connect it to a USB port. And because all this thing takes is five volts, a nice five volts from a USB wall wart, it will be good enough. Now, you need a certain amount of amperage, it'll be fine. But this gives him something that will be safe, effective, and awesome. All right, let's get to making it. All right, first step is, well, I already took care of it. Chopped off the other end of this USB cord. I'll peel back the wiring, identify the five volt in the ground, and then we'll be good to go. Hopefully you can see that, all right. So get the wires there. Next step is to clean this guy out. 
this thing is an absolute disaster. So I'll clean off the cord off screen, chop it off. Let's chop it off right now. Snip, snip. All right, I'll give them a nice long cord. There we go, we're good to go. Cord is clean. The inside is still, looks like it's a little crusty. So what we're gonna do, let's just toss this idiot on the floor. We're going to actually use a little deoxid in this, which will help both the 800XL port as well as the plug. And then just plug it in, work it a little bit. All right, that will be good for the time being. All right, the nice thing about this brick is it does show you which parts, which pins are the plus five volts and which ones are grounds. All right, so, what we have is these here, on the right here are the plus five volts, on the left are the grounds. So that gives us an opportunity. My guess is that the one with the stripe, the line with the stripe is the five volts, the black is the ground, that's a pretty, I think a pretty good guess, but always good to test and make sure that my assumption matches up. So we're just spinning these apart for right now. And then we'll just do a little bit of opening them up. There we go. Here we go. All right. So if I am correct, this one, this line here will tie out with the plus five volts from a continuity standpoint. All right, well, let's get some helping hands over here. Makes it so much easier. Just making sure. All right, so the goal is that this guy here. All right, stripe line is positive. Is the positive five volts, whereas black is ground. Perfect. You know, I need to get my soldering equipment out so that I can do this. All right, here we have the USB. We have red and black. And the other two, we're just gonna put off to the side because they don't matter at all. All right, we'll put them back in as we uh, heat shrink them. We'll put the heat shrink because we'll we want to get a good heat shrink on this cord. Let's make sure this will fit over everything. That should be good. And we'll probably want some smaller ones. Actually, yeah, I'll probably get a... Mm, yeah, the smaller one should be fine. And then we'll need smaller ones for each of these others. For the ground, 
and plus five volts. Slide them over like that. Slide this one over. All right. I say all right a lot, it seems like. But such is life. Let's tin these wires up, first and foremost. I need the red here. We'll start with the red guy. Good. Now for the black, we'll do the same thing for the black. Tin him up as well. That was a red one there. I want the black now. There we go. Black is done. Now we need these guys. A little bit of flux, probably a little too much flux, but hey, you never have too much flux, right? right. Except when it makes a mess. All right, here we go. Here, yes, you can see me. go. And now for you. Here we go. All right. And you, this guy goes to this guy. Red goes to this fellow here. the black next. Just a little bit more. Just want to fit this a little bit better. Is this the best thing to do? Probably not, but it'll work. There we go. Now, for black to black, ground to ground, last one. Right. Let that set for a minute. And we will be golden.
Let's get this heat shrink all in place. bit as I make sure we don't have any other issues with this wire. place and then we should be golden there we go oh, that was winding up on the other cord cords on cords on cords Good to test this out. All right, we have that final plug, USB. We'll attach it to a nice little wall wart here. Just where we go, right here. Plug it in. And then power this guy up. Put a little Pac-Man in here. Get that started. Flip the switch. Light on. Screen good. We're on AV here. Let's go to S video. Perfect. This looks great. Turned out wonderfully, a fun project, gift for a friend. Hopefully you enjoyed this journey on turning this uh, grubby Atari 800XL into something that was uh, perfectly working and looking good, ready to go. If you like the content, like and subscribe. Join me again for a future video. Have a fantastic day.